stress in soil. The stress in soil due to soil weight, contact stress or stress due to loading that is external stress due to self weight at any general situation given the x axis or z axis or y axis in the z axis means that is the depth in the ground sigma z is equal to gamma into z so at the depth z it is gamma z gamma is the unit weight of the soil and sigma x that is in x direction it is k0 into gamma z that is a lateral stress the cases for many layers of soil the vertical stress due to self weight of soil is given the following sigma z is equal to gamma into h1 first layer gamma 2 into h2 and gamma l into h1 is integral if it is sigma z then it is given like that with a uniform surcharge on infinite land surface sigma z is equal to gamma into z plus p p is the pressure on the earth surface that is original land surface above that some other land conventional surface or some other surface this total stress is equal to sigma z is equal to gamma into z plus p that is external pressure effective vertical stress due to self weight of soil consider a soil mass having a horizontal surface and with the water table at a surface level the total vertical stress that is the total normal stress on the horizontal plane at a depth z is equal to the weight of the material plus solids plus water per unit so gamma v sigma v is equal to gamma saturated into z the pore water pressure at any depth will be hydrostatic since the wide space between these solid particles is continuous therefore at a depth z u is equal to gamma w into z hence the effective vertical stress at the depth z will be sigma dash v is equal to sigma v minus u that is gamma saturated minus gamma w into z that is gamma dash z where gamma gamma dash is the buoyant unit weight of the soil the water table influence below ground level up to h1 the there is no water table so it's gamma 1 and from h2 to h3 water table is there starting at h2 and h3 is a clean water tight so sigma z is equal to gamma 1 h1 gamma dash h1 gamma 1 dash into h2 into gamma w into h2 plus gamma saturated into h3 generally for sand below water table gamma dash is used but for clay below water table it is difficult to determine which one is suitable we often choose the buoyant unit weight when the index of liquid limit is greater than one the saturated unit weight when the index of liquid limit is less than one when zero to liquidity index in between 0 and 1 the disadvantageous one is chosen contact stress concept of contact pressure 
a foundation is the interface between a structural load and the ground. The stress P applied by a structure to a foundation is often assumed to be uniform. The actual pressure then applied by the foundation to the soil is a reaction called the contact pressure P. And its distribution beneath the foundation may be far from uniform. The distribution depends mainly on stiffness of the foundation that is flexible or stiff or rigid and compressibility and stiffness of the soil. The loading conditions uniform or point loading. The contact pressure, the effects of the stiffness of the foundation, flexible or rigid and compressibility of the soil, clay or sand are illustrated in the figure below. The figure explains a flexible foundation on clay and a flexible foundation on sand. And same way, the rigid foundation on clay and rigid foundation on sand. Stiffness of foundation. A flexible foundation has no resistance to deflection and will deform or bend into a dish-shaped profile when stress are applied. A earth embankment could comprise a flexible structure and a foundation. A stiff foundation provides some resistance to bending and well deform into flatter dish shape. So the differential settlements are smaller. This forms the basis of a design for a raft foundation placed beneath the hole of the structure. A rigid foundation has an infinite stiffness and will not deform or bend. So, if moves towards the uniformity and this would apply to a thick, relatively small reinforced concrete pad foundation. Now the stiffness of soil. The stiffness of clay will be the same under the all parts of the foundation. So, for a flexible foundation, a fairly uniform contact pressure distribution is obtained with a dish-shaped sagging or settlement profile. For a rigid foundation, a dish-shaped settlement profile must be flattened out. So, the contact pressure beneath the center of the foundation is reduced and beneath the edges of the foundation, it is increased. Theoretically, the contact pressure increases to a very high value of the edges, although yielding of the soil would occur in practice, leading to some redistribution of stress. The stiffness of sand increase as the confining pressure around it increases. So, beneath the center of the foundation, the stiffness will be smaller. A flexible foundation of sand will therefore produce greater strains at the edges than in the center. So, the settlement profile will be dish-shaped but upside down, hogging with a fairly uniform contact pressure for a rigid foundation. This settlement profile must be flattened out so the contact pressure beneath the center would be increased and beneath the edges it would be decreased. Apart from the above concepts, a stress distribution, the stress that already exists within the ground due to self weight of the soil are discussed when a load or a pressure from a foundation structure is applied at a surface of the soil, this pressure is distributed throughout the soil and the original normal stresses and shear stresses are altered. For 
most civil engineering applications the changes in the vertical stress are required so that methods given below are increases in vertical stresses only so a central loading p by p is equal to p by footing area foundation area gives the distribution that is a rectangular stress distribution below the foundation if the loading moves from the center that is eccentricity e then p1 is equal p2 by pf plus or minus pe into w that e is less than within 0 and b by 6 so the pressure distribution changes rectangular distribution to um, what trapezium and then to still if is called further and e is equal to b by 6 it is a triangular distribution and that means one side the pressure is zero and the other side it is maximum still further if the eccentricity is beyond b by 6 or greater than that then naturally in one side the p at p2 you see that there is a negative pressure the negative pressure wherever it crosses the zero the negative pressure means there is a, a contact is lost with the soil and it is above the just above the ground so at zero where this there may be a crack or anything so that the area of the foundation the width of the foundation is reduced and the stress still further increases stress due to loading stresses beneath point load Busnick's published 1885 a solution for the stresses beneath the point load on a surface of a material which had the following property semi infinite this means infinite below the surface therefore providing no boundaries of the material apart from the surface homogeneous the same properties at all locations and isotropic the same properties the same mechanical properties in all directions elastic a linear stress strain relationship is valid the figure shows that a point load is acting to you on the ground x y is the ground level at a depth z and at a m is there and there is a geometrical explanation with this and this is the condition for a point load to be analyzed sigma z is given by 3p by 2 pi z cube by r to the power of 5 substitute z by r for cos beta and sigma z is equal to 3p by 2 pi into cos cube beta into divided by r square sigma z is equal to 3p by 2 pi z square 1 by 1 plus r by z whole square to the power of 5 by 2 that is equal to alpha some coefficient into p z this alpha is equal 3 by 2 pi and 1 plus r by z whole square 5 by 2 here the z is variable and the p is you can say yeah. 
so p if it is acting the first layer if you take differentiate into three layers or some layers and along a horizontal surface see the concentration is and influence also is decreased and concentration is also decreasing whereas in the first layer it is very high and the second layer third layer it is decreasing slowly these are the pressure bulbs sigma z means along this lines red lines the pressure is constant same and they are all pressure bulbs they call it as pressure bulbs if two point loads are there apart from some distance then if they are very nearer there is a overlapping zone you will see that a triangle it is shown the stress overlap each other once if a stress overlaps that zone z and z c in between that that zone the stress is double or added and the stress is very high so failure may occur in that zone the line load arrangement is also shown once if the line load is there there is a difference between that section so the it shows x z direction how m is located in x and di z direction so in x direction also there and by the z direction it is there previously it's only in the z direction because the point load is in the or a point load it is not now like that it is a so influence will be acted and here also sigma z is given by alpha into p by z then alpha here it is 2 by pi into 1 by 1 plus x by z whole square to the power of whole square so this is the alpha the coefficient is given and the stresses iso line a direction of principal stresses the value of maximum shear stresses are noted if q is the distributed load with a width b then the 0.8 q 0.6 q 0.4 q and 0.2 q are the distribution they are all mention so with the depth they decrease accordingly the first one is 0 to b b is the width of the point depth is b or equal 2b or 3b so as the depth increases this will decrease just introduction the new max influence chart devised a chart to obtain the vertical stress at any depth beneath the point the construction of the new max chart given in any test books you can see that and the influence value per block is so and so the influence area of the block is so and so then you put the uh, you draw to a scale the area of the foundation and wherever you want it that corner you put at the center and c count the number of blocks multiplied by the influence will give you the sigma z at that depth or like that this is the influence chart you will get in any of the 